Hi, I'm Troy. And I'm Linda, and we are Wines, Pines, and Canines. Today is the start of something new. We're going to do an entire series about campers like ours. We have a GeoPro 19 FBS. So if you're like us a few years ago when we were looking to buy our GeoPro, you were always on the hunt for similar lightweight campers to compare it to. And maybe you're just like us and you just like to look at and wander around other campers. Yep. So we're going to keep our eyes open and as we find a comparable camper to our GeoPro, we're going to go ahead and film it and bring it to you. And right now we're going to go look at a Coleman Rubicon 1608RB. <laughs> With regards to this video series, we're going to primarily focus on couples campers. 4,000 pounds dry weight, single axle, with layouts and functionality similar to our 19 FBS. Yes, we'll give you a quick video tour inside and out, and then we'll tell you in comparison to our GeoPro what things we liked, what things we didn't like, and any other observations that we see along the way. If you'd like to see more, please like and subscribe. Desi here. I want you to hit that notification bell. The front of these campers are real similar. They both have a large window with LED strips, power tongue jacks, propane, and the battery hookups are located there as well. There is a pass-through storage on the front of the camper under the bed. Like the GeoPro, it has waste tanks at the back in the same location and includes a black tank flush, which we really like. The back of the camper has a ladder and it is prepped for a backup camera. On the roof, we do have a solar panel and the camper also comes with an inverter and a wine guard similar to the one on the GeoPro. It does have a 12-foot power awning, a side solar panel hookup, and some real attractive off-road tires and rims. The door has frosted glass window but does not have a keypad lock. It does have an assist handle very similar to the GeoPro model though. So let's go inside and take a look. So our initial thoughts upon entering the camper was that it was a very similar layout to the 19 FBS. It has the east-west bed in the front. And if you've watched our video where we turn our queen size bed into a king size at night, um, I think the exact same modification can be done here very easily. It does have the three windows uh, around the bed and uh, a really nice kitchen layout. It's very light and airy in here with the uh, lighter colored cabinets and the gray countertops. It has the four drawers in the kitchen, of course that farmhouse sink. It has the two burner stove top, the range hood, and the regular microwave. The TV mounts over the window. Uh, the radio is with the control panel when you first come in, and it has two speakers in the ceiling. Now it also looks to have the newer 12 volt fridge that many of these campers are coming with. It also has a jackknife sofa, and I believe if you lift this up, there is some storage available under it. You also have the fold-up table behind it for eating. Inside the bathroom, it does feel a little roomier than ours does in the 19 FBS. We didn't bring a measuring tape, so we can't say for sure, but it just feels like we have a little bit more elbow room in here, but otherwise the layout is exactly the same. So that's the quick tour. Now on to our likes and dislikes. We are back. Let's get started. Yes. So we're going to talk about our likes and dislikes first. We have made notes because um, we didn't want to forget anything. So you might see us <laughs> referring to them. So for me, one of the big things that I really loved about this camper was that farmhouse sink. I mean, it just really stands out. Um, as compared to, you know, the Geo Pro, they have upgraded those sinks, thank goodness, from those old ones, but um, it's, it's hard to compete with that farmhouse sink. True. And I really loved that wood headboard by the bed with the pop-up for the electric. I do believe some of the models in the Geo Pro have something similar, but I do not believe the updated uh, FBS does. And so if they do, would love to hear it in the comments. Now for me, 
the first thing I noticed in doing my walk around on the outside was the black and gray tank setup. On our camper, it's a little bit flimsy. I had to reinforce it. On this particular model, they've done a nice job. Other than that, one of the pet peeves I have about my camper, it has one single speaker on the outside. This camper has two. You know, why shouldn't we have stereo in this day and age? So that's a big one for me. Now the big thing though was those steps. I absolutely love. Those are Lippert, they're not Moride. Right. Um, very similar, but that top step I think is like 13 inches deep and it really makes a difference when you go in and outside that camper. Makes it a lot more comfortable on that first, that last step in and the first step out. Yes. Um, so, um, now I also loved the fact that there was so much counter space in that kitchen. True. But it also leads me into the dislikes. So my first dislike was the fact that you lose a lot of storage with that, you know, open yeah. um, countertop area. So you don't have that little closet under the TV. So there's no place that I could see in that camper to actually hang clothes. Plus, they um, don't have those little cabinets over the couch like in ours, so you lose that space. And there's no drawer under the bed like in ours, so you lose yeah, that space. It's quite a bit. So it really did seem like there was a lot of storage space missing in this camper from ours. True. All right, there are a couple items that stood out right off the bat for me. Um, and a lot of these are just a matter of personal preference. Number one, I did not care for the fact that this particular camper does not have frameless windows. It's an aesthetic. It doesn't, it doesn't affect functionality, it's just personal preference. Also, there's no Asdell on this particular model. Um, the door that leads into the storage space underneath the bed, it's quite a bit smaller than on the Rockwood Geo Pro models and the inverter and the controller are located in here. That, something to think about. Less storage, there's still less storage. A couple other things. There were no cup holders on the side of the couch. That's so the big. couch kind of looked a little bit unfinished to us. Yeah. Um, so small thing, but um, just something mm -hmm. we noticed. There was also no netting in those upper cabinets. Right. Um, and the fan in the bathroom. It was not an upgraded fan like no. you find in our camper. It was kind of a basic fan. Yeah. Um, let's see no shower miser so mm. if you do a lot of boondocking um, having that shower miser actually we've used it a few times now so that is nice to have true and then one of the things i did dislike is on the cabinets on the upper cabinets in the kitchen they're glass now they're frosted glass but they're still glass and why? i just i mean when you're camping i just don't understand why you're not showing off fine china it's no. it's a personal thing i don't really want to see what's inside it um, so now I think we're going to go on to a few things we saw. We're not sure if they're a good thing or a bad thing, but we want to make you aware of them in case um, you're looking at this camper. Okay, first, I'm not sure if a TV comes with the camper. Um, there was no TV in the camper, but we have heard that some dealers take them out because you know they might get stolen. So um, it's just something to look at and see if they do come with it or um, if it's an option. I didn't see an outside shower. Um, that's not used a lot by us, but it gives us the option of using it and you never know if you're gonna need it or not. Other than that, they use a different system for the slide, whereas ours, I don't I think know. it's a Schwintech. A Schwintech system. Slide, yeah. It has little teeth and a motor that pulls it back and forth. This camper uses a cable pulley system, which looks like galvanized cables that pull the unit in and out. Also, different AC maker. Um, True. Ours is a Coleman Mock. Mm -hmm. This one was a Dometic, um, so I don't know quality difference on the two. Uh, one thing I did notice is it had four little vents around the top, uh, which was nice because yeah. you can direct that airflow a little bit different. And the stove was a two burner versus a three burner. And I like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that. Um, I like the two burner actually, it gives it a little bit more room, but it was just a regular microwave. I don't see where you could fit an oven in there and I didn't see any other place for an oven. I do not see it listed as an option online right. and I don't see a convection oven as an option. Um, so, you know, it'd probably be something you would need to talk to a dealer about. One of the things I noticed which is kind of good and bad, I guess, depending on how you look at it, one from a service standpoint, but the gas lines that lead from the propane tanks, 
to either the quick couple on the side of the camper or to the two burner gas grill that you just mentioned, they're actually installed on the frame outside of the camper. They're underneath. In my mind, that tells me they're exposed to road debris. But on the flip side, it also means you can service the equipment, make modifications to it if you decide to. And I didn't see any kind of option for bike or kayak uh, mounting bracket on the tongue. And because there is no bumper, I see no way to mount one on the back of the trailer. Also, I didn't see an option, and I looked online before this, we made this video, I didn't see any option for heated tanks. So that would really affect your ability to use this camper in northern climates. Colder weather, yeah, exactly. And you know, some of the things that we didn't see, and I just don't know if they don't include, you know, kind of their own things, but with the Geo Pro, you know, you get little things like that little hanging yeah. um, organizer in the shower and the little shelf, and it comes with the suburban griddle now. Yeah. So those little items are really nice. Yeah. Now, you know, for some of these... Um, Yes, it did. It came with a spatula. I forgot. <laughs> now, so, there were a couple of things that I just dislike on both campers, and I, I didn't notice any different on this one than the Geo Pro. One is the stabilizers. I, I just yeah. I think they're undersized. True. And for a little bit more, I think you know these companies could upgrade those stabilizers because it makes a big difference when you're setting up. Yes, it does. And you just spoke of it um, there is no bumper on this one either which means that spare tire is also mounted underneath and it doesn't give you the ability to put like a cargo carrier on there so. in fact the spare tire is right behind where the gas connection is so when you do drop this tire out if you ever need to you're going to have to work around that gas connection so there you have it our thoughts and observations we certainly have missed something so if you own this camper please let us know in the comments now, as we conclude this video, we're going to give you a, a shot of another one that was on the lot when we were there. Now, we couldn't look inside this one because it was sold, but it was so nice on the outside. So we are looking forward to filming this um, in the future. Yep. And if you have any thoughts on this camper, we'd love to hear it. Um, it is a Black Label Wolf Pup by Forest River. As always, thanks for watching.